Hello. How are you? Uh, Salam alaikum. Uh, Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. <laughs> okay. Are you a non-Muslim and you have a husband that is a Muslim? Oh, you heard him. Yes. Nam. Is he North African? Like Algeria, Moroccan, Tunisian? Iraqi. 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 Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? That's good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So what's what's going on? So basically, he's Sorry. trying to explain to me the Quran because I'm Christian. And he's trying to explain to me why the Quran is the word of God and why the Bible is not the word of God. And I have watched a lot of your videos because I feel like, you know, like you spoke to the person before you, you're not really argumentative. And I can hear the point clearer if someone's not like coming at me, but they're just trying to give me genuine information. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's a, it's an Islamic thing. In fact, you know, there's a hadith which is very strong. It is the most despicable person in the sight of Allah is the person who's very argumentative. Mm -hmm. So when you see people too much argument, they're not really representing the teachings of Islam. Because look, I've been doing this for a while and it is easy to know from the beginning of a conversation whether someone's already made up their mind or not. Okay, Sandra. So uh, you're married to the yeah. Iraqi brother? How long have yeah. you guys been married? Five years. <laughs> Five years, okay. <laughs> my, my husband has been working on me for patiently for quite a while. Do you, would you say he's doing a good job or not? Uh, yeah, he's been very patient with me. He's been allowing okay, me to... Okay. Uh, Try to learn on my own. Um, you know the differences between Islam and Christianity, correct? Yes, I have been reading my Quran and I have been watching your videos. I watch Omar and Mufti Mink. Okay. Um, I have been exposed to Islam like even before I met my husband, but it was more so Christians telling me like, you know, Jesus is in the Quran. And I was like, well, if Jesus is in a Quran, why do I need to read the Quran? Because Jesus is in the Bible. Like I, but no one has ever went into depth about what the differences are. So like some of the things that I have learned so far, like as far as the afterlife, which was really important to me, um, what does it mean if I die as a Muslim versus what I know I die as a Christian? And I think the one thing that opened my heart a little bit more to trying to to really read it was when it says that the people who you harm will stand in front of you in front of God. Meaning, you know, it's not just that you're saved by God, but yes, you are saved, but you still have done harm on this world and you will be answer for the things you have done even after you come to be a believer in Islam, which kind of, I was like, oh, I really like that because that's something that I always fought with in Christianity was, you know, if you believe in God and you're saved, all your sins are forgiven, but you still have harmed people. Even though Jesus takes our sins away, you still have put harm on someone else who now has to deal with that harm. Where is your consequence? It shouldn't just be here because I don't know. Anyway, so. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. The idea of accountability. You cannot just mm -hmm. claim that just because you believe something, now you're free of any accountability towards the people you've harmed in life, towards mm -hmm. the evil things that you've done. That is an illogical thing. I completely agree with you, which is why Islam completely rejects this idea. Allah says in the Quran وَلَا تَزِرُ وَزِرَةٌ وَزِرَةٌ أُخْرَى Cannot put the sin of a person upon another person. Mm. So if you do evil, I cannot bear your sin and you do not bear my sin. Everyone is responsible for what he does. And mm -hmm. whether you are a Muslim or you're a Muslim does not give you a free ticket to do whatever you want to do. Exactly. So, But yeah, I like the need... fact that it said that you also will be accountable even after you have accepted God. It's something yes. that I found very, that opened my heart. And I was like, okay, well, let me look into what my husband's saying a little bit more and not just be closed off because that rang true to me. Yeah, that's true. Well, about Jesus because you said you you already found that Jesus and Islam why do I need to read the Quran but the, the perception of Jesus and Islam is different to Christianity how do you see Jesus yourself um, you watching my videos well I guess I, like I said I, I do a lot of research and I watched you for a while before I called you actually so uh a lot of what you say like it was it's very emotional. Like I, I grew up in a very, a home with people with different beliefs. So I grew up in different doctrines and all that stuff. And I grew to grow towards Christianity because I felt like that's what drew to me. But it's a, it was an emotional draw. I was at a low place in my life and I felt like that's what called to me. And I, and I called on the name of Jesus. And that's what at the time emotionally helped me get out of certain things, helped me change my life around and put me on a, on a good path. And I feel like, you know, that path has led me to my husband, you you know, the God that I serve, the Jesus I believe in has led me to the wonderful husband I have now. And, you know, it's kind of hard for me to reconcile the fact that the God that I serve, the Jesus that I believe in has done all these things for me. But yet at the same time, it can't be real. Like whatever I was led by was not God. Like then what was it? I know I make my own choices, but those experiences, as you say, emotional experiences led me to what I believe now is totally emotional, Mr. Muslim Lantern. Uh, So I know how you are, <laughs> but it was like, a, you know, it was a really deep mo moment for me. And and I had a lot of hatred and it was a lot of anger. I was a really angry child. And I said those words and like a peacefulness came over me. And, you know, and it was something with a family member. And God told me to come down and apologize to that person. 
And that just started to snowball. And then I started, you know, going in and out. Then I went to a church and then I got baptized and even more things started happening. So it was like, it's very, I don't know, anecdotal, my life, my story. What I can say is the following, guys, because you already know, look, no one can argue against emotional things. I can bring you now from the chat, 100 Muslims with, the same, with a similar story, right? Mm -hmm. But rather than calling upon Jesus, they called upon Allah. Yeah. You, I can bring you 100 Hindus that rather than calling upon Allah or Jesus, they call upon Krishna. Yeah. Mm. Does that make, therefore, their beliefs true? Just because mm. they call upon on something and then they got that thing happening and no. it's not hard to find these stories uh, sister if you just go on youtube and you click in your religion and you click experience you'll have you'll have people talking about their experience mm -hmm. and very genuine you you will know it's genuine because you will see it's not faked you can know when someone is faking a reaction or someone is not faking a reaction exactly you, yeah you'll see many of those people have had genuine experiences mm -hmm. but in the end can this just personal experience that I had in my life be a criteria for what is true and what is false. No. Why did God give me a, an intellect and a mind and told me to search and seek the truth and research? Um, for that very reason, to search and make sure, you know, find me in the world, in the world and in the word, try to find me. And when you said you called upon Jesus, did you know any other gods to call upon? Anyways, that's what you were raised upon. So no, I you. was, I was, at the time, I was still more familiar with Christianity. Yeah, if if you're raised upon something, you would naturally call upon that which is you're raised upon. What you would think, what you identify yourself with. Would it make any sense for someone who was born in a Christian family, raised in a Christian family, to call upon something else? So if you genuinely thought Jesus was God and you called upon God for mm. help, Allah helps the people who are in need. Yeah? Even if I say Jesus? If you did not know what the true God is, the only thing you knew was Jesus and you genuinely oh, thought Jesus so. was God, mm -hmm. so would it make any sense for Allah to expect you to call upon something else? Because you do not know mm. anything else, is it? You only know Jesus. And you think... Oh, so it was my sincerity that made God answer my prayer. Yeah, if you sincerely call upon Allah, that's something well known in Islamic literature. In fact, Allah says in the Quran that they, when they are in the sea and the waves are like mountain, they call upon Allah, they call upon God. Allah means God, right? They call upon mm -hmm. God sincerely. And then when Allah saves them and they go to the shore, they start associating partners with him again. Do you get the point? So in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the point, in the point mm. of sincerity, in the point of need, you'll call upon Allah sincerely. You want to call upon God. God help me. And then God help mm -hmm. you. And then in the end, mm -hmm. you come back to associating partners with him when it's time to ease now, when things are okay. But the mm. question is this. You are calling upon Jesus as if he mm -hmm. is God. Did Jesus tell you, I am God? Anyways, you mean, what do you mean? Like, did Jesus talk to me when I prayed? Look, because how do you know anything about Jesus? You only have writings from him. That are yes. in change anyways. But even if you accept them to be true, those writings that you have of Jesus, did Jesus ever claim in those writings that he's God and you should call upon him when you are in need? Or did yeah. he teach the people to pray to God the Father? He, he taught us to pray to God. He would say, you know, yes. well, and all the prayers that are in, are in the Bible of the ones that are in red, he was praying to the Father. You said it yourself. He was praying to the Father. He didn't mm -hmm. pray to himself. He didn't say to the people, when you are in need, come to me. But, but we're told, but told, we're told. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. What he told the people, instead of, when they said to him, how can we pray? He told them the Heavenly Father prayer. Yes. And there's no Jesus in that prayer. I've seen that. <laughs> So so he taught them to pray to God, the Father. And he said to yeah. them repeatedly, pray to God. Ask God if you need something, do God. I'm the way to the Father. The Father is always the Father. So mm -hmm. he did not say to the people, I am God. Worship me. When you are in need, come to me. When you have a perception of Jesus, wouldn't it make sense to have a perception of Jesus that what, what he claimed about himself? Not a made up idea that we make about him. Yeah, that would make sense with what's in the Bible, but it's but then you guys say that the Bible's corrupt and we we'll, and and I'll have things in the Bible that says that, you know, like in Revelations one thing that I saw in Revelations, that which kind of made me open my heart again was, you know, I thought that we were just saved by grace. But in Revelations, let me see, I have my Bible in front of me in the Quran also. So <laughs> Revelations? Yeah, 22, chapter 22, verse 12. Go ahead. It says, and behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work, which is what made me stop. So it's, it's in red. So it's claiming that this is Jesus speaking. And this is why I was watching your videos and everything else. <laughs> and I saw that and I was like, you know, it's, so is the reward by my works. So is my, is Jesus saving me from my sin, but my reward is based on my works. And even though you said this is in red letter writing, it's just a vision of someone saw as a dream. It's not when Jesus was alive. This is a vision that, that John so 
Even if you read, you'll see that it was a vision. Yeah, it was a vision. All yeah, of our revelations are vision. Yeah, so someone said, I saw a dream when Jesus said X, Y, and Z. Just like Paul, he said, I saw Jesus <laughs> of my vision to Damascus. Anyone can claim anything. I can say mm. I was sleeping, I saw Jesus, he said this is and, and that to me. So mm. when you say, we say the Bible is not allowed, this is what, what Christian scholars say. But what we say, just because something is corrupted, does not mean that it does not have also truth with it. Mm. So when Muslims so say what is something, true? what is true is that which is in, in line with what the Quran teaches. Question is why? Because the Quran is preserved, we can establish is from God. By definition, is the word of God then because we can establish it's from God. So if anything contradicts the words of God, then it's, it's a lie. If it goes in line with the word of God, then we would accept it to be true. What I'm trying to do with you now is to show you the Bible that you're reading, even though it's changed, mm -hmm. using it, we can know that Jesus is in God. Does God have a God or God is the God of everyone? God is the God of all of us. Does Jesus say he has a God, not just Father, a God? Does he say that? No. Okay. Can you open John chapter 20, verse 17? John 20, 17. Yes, can you read it for me? She turned and said to him, Rabuni, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father uh -huh. and to my God and your God. To my God and? Your God. How can he be God and he has the same God as you? Because he comes from the God. No, no, but uh, aren't we all created by uh, by God as well? Yeah, so he's saying that we're, it's, he's talking about the one God. Exactly, but you're saying he is the one God. Jesus is a part of God. Okay, let's get this straight. Let's understand this, Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> According to the Trinity, by the way, Christians don't believe Jesus is a part of God. They believe he's a person. There are three persons in one being. They don't believe in a part because it's a heresy called partialism. If you mm. lived, by the way, uh, like uh, 1,000 years ago, they would kill you <laughs> for this heresy. The church is not going to let you stay alive. If you see he's a part, then he's 33%. Is Jesus 33% God? I mean, God's spirit is part of him as a Christian. You know, from my lens, if I believe that the spirit of God was in, was in Jesus, meaning... It wasn't my spirit, your spirit. It was the spirit of God in Jesus. Okay, let me ask you this very simply. I'll tell you why it, the beliefs of Christianity, I believe, is very confusing. I'll tell you why. Look, can you tell me simply, what is God? God is Who the creator is of everything. What is he? What, what is his definition? Is he one? Just one God that created everything. So is he the father then? Yes. So one is the father. So what is the, the Holy Spirit then? The Holy Spirit is what came after Jesus died. So it's not God. So it's the continuation. It's like God had all his... Everything in the beginning in the Old Testament, it was, and then Jesus came through Mary, which was a miraculous birth. And then once that spirit was gone, like meaning like once he ascended into heaven with God, with himself, then the spirit of the Holy Spirit was released onto the world to all of us. That's what we believe. No, no. Okay. So, so the Holy Spirit is something that was later on released. So it's not God. It's not a part of God. It was always with God. It just was released. It was a promise that was given to us after Jesus no. died. Yeah, it's you can be with God, but you're not God, isn't it? Like something can be with me, but uh, it's not me. So the question is, is the Holy Spirit God? It's the Holy Spirit God. Um, I don't say that the Holy Spirit is God. Okay. So Wait, I don't know what you mean by is the Holy Spirit. You talking about because of people, uh, the Trinity? That's what you mean is like, is that God? Was that a part of God? Yes, I believe the Holy Spirit is a part of God. I don't believe that humans have the Holy Spirit. I don't believe we, I don't believe Jesus as a man died. And then he had a spirit that he could release because he's not God. Only God has a spirit that can... No, no. What, what I'm trying to do with you, sister, is to show you that the Bible it does not support this belief that there are three gods, literally, even though Christians uh, okay. claim him. Because look, you have Jesus praying to the Father. Yes. You have the Holy Spirit being commanded by Jesus. Yes. And you have it performing certain things. In the baptism, you have the Holy Spirit flying as a dove, the voice from heaven, and Jesus being baptized. Those cannot be one by definition. It cannot be mm -hmm. one God. Jesus mm -hmm. is a creation of God that was walking this earth, that was praying, that was begging God for help. According to Christians, we don't believe that. But when he was mm -hmm. on the cross, he was begging for help. How can you be God begging for help from yourself if you're God? How you be you begging help from yourself? Because we're, we're taught that he also was in human form, meaning with human emotions, all those things were upon him as well. Don't you agree so, that, that, that God's definition and human definition is a contradiction? Like humans are weak. God is all powerful. Humans are ignorant. God is all knowing. How can he be both at the same time? Mm -hmm. I guess if, I don't have a good say, answer for that. Yeah, it's okay. I appreciate the honesty. Look, if you say he was God walking on earth, doesn't he have all the attributes of God? Not on earth, no. He doesn't have the attributes of God. Not all of them because it's a spirit. It's not like God literally came into Mary. He released a part of himself into Mary to bring forth Jesus to die for our sins. It's kind of weird to say it that way, but I feel like when I hear Muslims speak of it, it's almost like you're speaking like God broke himself off into three people and how could it be? And it's like, no, it's God. Like, I guess in my mind, I'm thinking God can do all things in his creation and outside of his creation, well, if that makes there's sense. There's a difference, a difference between what God is and what God does. You're conflating the two now. We 
we're talking about who is God. You understand? We're talking about the definition of God. If mm-hmm. you claim God includes Jesus, mm-hmm. you have to pick and choose. Because in reality, I'll be honest with you, sister, because what you're saying now does not represent the majority of what Christians believe. But it's your belief, okay. and it's okay for you to say your belief. But my question to you right now, Jesus, when he was on earth, what was he? Was he God? Was he not God? What was he? When he was on earth, he was God's spirit on earth. The word, they said. So did he have a God attribute or, or did not have or just a human? He had the godly attributes that God wanted him to have to prove who he was. Okay, which God attribute did he claim he has? Um, raising people from the dead. He didn't claim that his, this is his attribute. He claimed God the Father is doing it. What do you mean? If you read Acts chapter 2, verse 22, for example, it says, Jesus of Nazareth, uh-huh. my miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did, the Father did, through him, okay. through Jesus, and you're witness to it. When Moses was splitting the sea, he did not have an attribute of God. No. When other prophets and messengers were uh, performing miracles, like John the Baptist okay. and other, it, it's not that they had an attribute of God, it was God performing those. Okay. I'm saying what attribute, because you claim he had God, God's attribute. What mm-hmm. attribute, any attribute of God did Jesus claim? Did he claim I'm all-knowing? Did he claim he's all-powerful? Did he claim he's eternal? What, what attributes of God did he claim? Not to any of the ones that you named. He just said, I am that I am, or I am God. I mean, I Am. Yeah, no, he did. I, I clarify. Yeah, yeah. I am who I am. Like when the when they was about to kill him, they say I am who you who you say I am. The he king of the Jews. I'm not learned. I, I don't remember the whole Bible verbatim, but I don't remember him saying I am God. Yeah, no, no. I'm saying you know what in any way from the Bible from beginning to end, he did not claim the attributes of God. He did not claim to be all knowing. He claimed the opposite. Mm-hmm. He said in John chapter five verse thirty, for example, he said I by myself can do nothing. He claimed that he doesn't know. So, certain things. For example, the fig tree, when he was hungry, when he cursed the fig tree because he did not know it's is the season of figs. He said, no one knows the day and the hour. Mark 13, 32. He said, no one knows the day, the day and the hour. Not the angels. Except for the Father, yeah. Yes. So he claimed he doesn't know certain things. So the attributes of God, he died. And this is, okay, if you guys believe he died, don't believe that. But if you yeah. believe he died, he cannot be God because God is immortal according to the Bible. Okay. So all of the attributes of God, he did not have. He had all the attributes of humans. So why would you ascribe divinity to him when he did not claim divinity at all? Well, because actually, and Paul and Peter, I mean, Peter and Hebrews and Revelation, all of those things came after that seemed to when Paul fell and said that he had, like you said, you know, an encounter, a personal encounter. He said it was Jesus. And that brought him from persecuting Christians to Let follow. Me ask you this. Why do you believe what Paul says? He never met Jesus in his life. Why would you believe what he says? Mm-hmm. And the disciples had disagreements with Paul. What are you talking about? Acts chapter 17, for example, Acts chapter 21. If you read like the court where he was teaching the Jews, they don't need to follow the law anymore. And then <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he was not a trustworthy person because he was teaching the Jews that they don't, they don't need to follow the law anymore. If you read Galatians, mm-hmm. he was clearly saying that the law was a curse. Because you Jesus. believe what Jesus died for sins, you don't have to... But the reason why Jesus they made him follow the law was because it was to separate the people of God from everyone else to show that they were of God. No, no, but Sister Sandra, what did Jesus say? He said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, yeah, onwards. It opened Matthew chapter 5 and read it. Does it matter if I'm reading from the New King James Version? Is that bothering you? Want. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Continue next verse. <laughs> For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away. Uh, wait, so till heaven and earth pass away uh, means that uh, till, uh, till the end of times. Yeah. Continue. Says, one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till it is all fulfilled. Uh, but he so, fulfilled it, though. No, but in the next verse. Next, oh. next verse. <laughs> okay. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men, so shall be called least a kingdom in heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say uh-huh. to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Uh-huh. But that's so but what? wasn't he just talking to the Jews? No, uh, but you can apply that to anything in the Bible. You can say anything you talking to the Jews because of course he was sent to the Jews so anything he will say is to the Jews but he's speaking well, to you can I tell you yeah. why he's speaking to you because he said unless mm. your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees which are the Jews so he's speaking to someone other than the Jews he's saying unless you do better than them which is not just observing the law but also have faith because mm-hmm. the issue was that they, 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 they don't have faith but they observe the law so he said you have to do both if you do not you have to fulfill the law not even a tittle a drop of the law shall pass he's saying whoever teaches others not to follow the law which is like Paul did he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven but Paul couldn't have been deceiving because we believe that he fulfilled the law when he died. No, but do you know what fulfilling means in the English language? It's done. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. No, no. Fulfill is to make something full. Yeah. So 
fulfilling does not mean to remove something. That's not the case. What Jesus did is he brought certain commands that he brought mm -hmm. with him, that he told mm -hmm. the people, and he removed certain things of the practices that the Jews were doing. That's the fulfillment that he did. Never in his life did he not practice the commands or tell any of his disciples not to practice them. This is just the teachings of Paul that he's doing. And these verses are clear. They're telling you until heaven and earth. You know, he's saying, <laughs> he's saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I was about to, I was about to, I was about to come back, but then he was like, yeah, so till heaven and earth pass away. Yes, okay. yes. So he clearly said that it's an eternal thing. That's why James, the brother of Jesus, what did he say? Faith without works is dead. And that's after Jesus. He's saying that faith without doing your works is dead, is useless. And you yourself, okay. we were saying, how does it make any sense to say that I can just believe and do whatever I want and there's no accountability for the deeds that I do? Well, I don't believe as a Christian we can do whatever we want. I meant like in the afterlife, like once we die, we're not held accountable for our sins because we're already dead and we believe in Jesus. I said what brought me to Islam and opened my heart a little bit more was the fact that after you die and after you say you believe in Allah, you still are held accountable. But what matters is the afterlife nothing else if as a christian you're forgiven because jesus took all the sins away i can do anything and and in the afterlife i'm not worried that, not, that anything bad will happen to me so i'm saying to you that look reading these verses is clear jesus is telling you you have to also do the works you have to also but the law the was crazy back then but the law that they had for <laughs> exactly. you had to do a lot <laughs> interesting sister do you know that's why allah says in the quran that the prophet muhammad came to everyone in the world including the jews and the christians mm. and then one of the things that allah mentions in the quran in chapter 7 the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is lifting some of the burdens. The burdens are these laws that you're referring to. So the laws, a lot of the laws were difficult mm -hmm. for the children of Israel because they were a disobedient nation. Yeah. They, whatever, they saw the, the miracles and they started worshiping the cow. Whatever good that God did, they still were a disobedient nation. That's why Allah sent Prophet Muhammad ﷺ to remove all of those burdens upon the people by following him. Mm -hmm. By you following Muhammad? Yes, by following the Prophet of Allah, which is Prophet Muhammad. Just like Jesus is a Prophet of Allah that we believe in, just like Moses is a prophet of Allah that we believe in. So you mean by following what the laws that now Prophet Muhammad has put in the Quran and exactly. Hadith, you exactly. don't have to worry about the laws of Jews? Yes, so it's not the same laws. So you don't have a lot of the laws that they have, certain things, foods that they use to eat. Oh yeah, I read Deuteronomy, so... Yes, Deuteronomy, then you know yeah. what I'm talking about. So mm -hmm. the, a lot of these things are not, are not the case in Islam because Prophet Muhammad has lifted a lot of the burdens that were upon people. And Allah says in the Quran that he made these burdens upon the children of Israel because of their injustice. Justice. It's not for everyone. Yeah. So Allah said because they were a disobedient nation, He made things difficult for them because they made it difficult for themselves. So it would not make sense for you to also follow these same laws because you are not like them. So yeah. Allah sends prophets and messengers to different nations. So Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. is sent to everyone now. So the law that he has today is the one we follow. Like, for example, if you're living at the time of Jesus and you said, I follow Moses. And Jesus said to you, but I'm sent to you now. You're supposed to follow me now, not, Je not Moses. Mm. And then you say, no, 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 I follow Moses. <laughs> this is what Christians are doing today when we say to them, Prophet Muhammad was sent to you and they say, no, I follow Jesus. Okay. But they wouldn't be don't... wrong in following Moses because it was the law no, no, at the they, time. They would be wrong. Because Jesus brought other commands. Mm, oh, yeah. What the like in your heart, you sin yes. in your heart first. Yes. Yeah. And many other things as well. He left some of the commands that they were doing as well. They were criticizing him for not following some of the commands that God have uplifted as well. Because look, do you know what it means to reject the messenger of God? It is to reject God by extension. Exactly. Because the messenger, yeah, he's sent by God. You're just rejecting the messenger of God. By extension, you're rejecting God. So mm -hmm. if they rejected Jesus, that's why you cannot be a Muslim and reject Jesus. You cannot but be But you a don't Muslim. believe in the Jesus that we believe in. So isn't that rejecting? This is what we were just establishing, sister. The Jesus okay. we believe in is not the Jesus who he claimed about himself. Okay. Okay, so if I'm going to understand this correctly, I'm sorry. I hope I'm not yeah. taking up too much no, time. No, 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 it's okay. So the Jesus that we serve or believe in as Christians, not that Muslims believe in, and the Jews, the Jesus or Isa, as you guys say, or my husband says, is the same Jesus. It's just that you believe that God did a miraculous verse in Jesus because it was his creation, made him talk as a baby, I think my husband said. And that was the way to prove that she was without man, meaning like, you know, this child is not a normal child. This child is of God. You're close enough, but let me just clarify a bit more. Okay. We're saying there's only one Jesus, the one mm -hmm. described in the Quran. And we're saying even the book that you're reading, it does not support the Jesus that you're serving. That's okay. the I'm making now. I'm saying the Bible does not support the idea of Jesus that you are following. The part of God. Yeah, that he's a part of okay. God or that he has mm -hmm. attributes of God. It does not support any of that. Rather, it supports the Islamic perception of Jesus, which means that what you believe is what the church taught you or what people around you taught you it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with who Jesus really was. Okay, but the Jesus in the Quran just speaks of does he speak in the Quran does he you know, Allah quotes him. yeah Allah quotes Jesus speaking in the Quran yes so this is the Jesus that you guys believe ascended with God 
So for example, Allah said, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ وَكْنُ مَرْيَمُ Those who say that Jesus, the Messiah, is God, have disbelieved. Okay. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And Jesus said, O children of Israel, اَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ Worship Allah, your Lord mm-hmm. and my Lord. Remember the verse I showed you. I'm going yes. to my Lord and your Lord. Mm-hmm. مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever associates with Allah. Yeah. God have made paradise impermissible for him. He's not going to enter paradise. So I'm not going to enter this. <laughs> Whoever associates, this is the truth, sister. Whoever associates with God, that's why you see always God in the Old Testament. For you're reading, I'm a jealous God. Mm-hmm. Do not take yes. any image other than me. Do not worship any other than me. Do not take idols. Why? Because if you've given the attributes, the, the worship, yeah, uh, the gratitude of the Most High to any anyone else, of course, you don't deserve to go to paradise. I'm not okay. you. I'm not talking about you, right? Yeah, it's okay. Saying, That's where I yeah. am right now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't mean you, sister. Though, but mm-hmm. I have to tell you the truth. Anyone who does that, if I do that, if I worship Prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. or I worship Jesus, or Moses, or Noah, or my father, or a picture, or a cow, like some people do, whatever mm-hmm. you worship other than God, you don't deserve to enter paradise if you die in that state. So, okay, how about I say this? Because not a lot of people in Christianity believe in the in the Trinity. So let's say you're a part of, I think it's Orthodox Christians. I'm not sure if they are in here and I'm wrong. Sorry, you guys. But there is a part of Christians who don't believe in the divinity of Jesus. So yeah. because they don't see him in that way, does it, does it still apply to them? So when I say someone does not enter paradise, sister, I mean if they continue this believing by, ah, okay. by, by associating and they die with that. If they okay. repent before their death and they worship God alone, then they're not they're not gonna go to hell. So also, on my deathbed is what you're saying. No, no, no. I'm saying you have until you die, and no one knows when he's gonna die. Oh, okay. So repentance is open until death, obviously. God is giving you yeah. a chance until you die. And you do not know when you're gonna die, and of course, God is not happy with you worshiping other than him. Why would yes. you continue doing that anyway? If someone mm-hmm. dies without receiving the message, like some of those Orthodox people never heard the message of Islam and they die, then they have a different test of the day of judgment. So I'm not giving a blanket statement for everyone. You okay. Mm. So there are exceptions, but the general rule is if you know the truth and you worship other than God and you die upon that, you enter hellfire. So what we are calling you to, sister, is to actually follow Jesus. What Jesus said to you is that he himself is a human being. He's powerless. He cannot do anything by himself. He does mm-hmm. not know. Only God knows. He put his head on the floor and he prayed to God. We're asking uh, you to do the same, to pray to okay. God alone. And to believe that he was a messenger, he's a prophet. He claimed that he's a prophet in Mark chapter 6, if you want to read. And he said he's sent by God. And people called him a messenger of God. And he said, worship God alone, the Father. And he didn't say that he is God. He didn't say anyone worship me. So following Jesus is being a Muslim. You understand what I'm saying now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know I know you guys believe that it, it's happened since the beginning. Like Muslims have been around since the beginning because it's just a call to follow God. Yes. Um. Okay, so if, if the Jesus that you serve, you say, are in, is in the Quran, is the same one we have in jesus since that's what was told to me when i first heard about islam was like i was like why would i believe it's if it's jesus so it's the only thing that differs is just the divinity is there anything in the bible that jesus says that does not align with the quran or is it everything in the bible that jesus says that's in red aligns with the quran it's just that we have it wrong that he's divine well there's something to understand as i said to you before we don't view the bible as a trustworthy source of the words of jesus to begin with according to christians themselves it's written by unknown people unknown the names people. are at the top uh, yeah do you know when when the people wrote these names were added later on these these names are not are not added by the authors who wrote the the gospels do you know that no i've and never heard I ask, that yeah and and i you just if you google it you'll see are the writers of the Gospels anonymous, you will get Christians telling you that they are. I just know Hebrews is anonymous. I think it's Hebrews. Yeah, anonymous. Hebrews for sure is anonymous. But but mm-hmm. the, the the when we say anonymous, what do we mean by that? Who is Matthew? Uh, Matthew was one of the uh, followers of Jesus. What, what is his life? What is his full name? What is it? How did he live? How, how old was he? Any image? Any information about him? Uh, All you have is a first name. Well, they say he was a Jewish collector. But that yeah, a lot of scholars have moved away from that. But why? Because oh, if, you well. read the of Matthew, <laughs> if you read if you read Matthew by itself. If you read mm-hmm. Matthew chapter 9 verse 9 for example mm-hmm. it says and Jesus met a tax collector called Matthew and mm-hmm. Jesus said to him and he said to Jesus if Matthew is writing this isn't he going to say I met Jesus and Jesus said to me and I said to him I mean writings you can write in third person first person like yeah but but no, nowhere in, in Matthew does it say I'm Matthew writing this <laughs> nowhere does it say I, I, I'm John writing this oh nowhere come on Mr. Ali say, I'm, uh, sorry what do you mean I so mean, you mean, mean in the Quran it says Prophet Muhammad says he's saying it or the, the 
the Quran is not the words of Prophet Muhammad. The Quran is the words of Allah, and the Quran does say it's the words of Allah. Yes, and it says it was revealed from Allah. And it says on it every surah, on every chapter, it says in no, no, in the. I didn't ask for every chapter, sister. I just said once. Where does it say ever in Matthew that I am Matthew writing this? Where does it say it I'm John writing this? It doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So it is later on the names were were added. The names that you're quoting historically, it's a fact that later on the names were added, and then they said that the, the, they were written by the. the so but wouldn't that be true for all of the Bible then? But that's what we're saying. It's not why it's not just <laughs> Oh, that's what you're saying. <laughs> that's, that's why okay, we're saying. Okay, I finally get what you're trying to say. Yes, right, so right. we're saying to you, we're not really concerned about what Jesus said in there necessarily. But we're saying mm-hmm. there could be statements of truth recorded there. Like, for example, worship God alone. Here, here O Israel, your, your Lord God is one God. That agrees with the Quran. We don't have an issue with that. Or Jesus telling people to do good, not to commit adultery, not to kill, not to rape, not to steal. All of these laws. I guess what I don't understand is what I'm hearing from Muslims, including yourself, eloquently you speak, is that it's supposed to be a continuation. So that means either there's a breakdown between the Jews and the Christians where somehow God gave the revelation to Prophet Muhammad that something was happening between the years, between the, the Torah in the Quran that something needs to be put into one book. Uh, no, no, no. Which... I'll explain to you. I'll explain to you what's going on. In okay. the past, Allah used to send prophets to every nation. Yes. So every nation, okay, that Moses, revelation, Abraham, okay. the beliefs, yeah. The beliefs that they teach the people is the same. All of the prophets and messengers, they teach the same beliefs about God. That there is one God worthy of worship, his angels, yes. afterlife. All the beliefs they teach the same. But the yes. laws are different based on the people, the society, and the time. And those prophets are only to their people. That's why you see Jesus said to the people of Israel in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. He said, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. So if he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he's not for everyone. So his laws is only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What happened is later on, the Roman Empire, they adopted I'm, a, I'm aware of that history, at least. <laughs> yeah. The Roman Empire adopted Christianity. So they introduced philosophical beliefs to, to Christianity and, okay. and made Jesus as the son of God and made him a part of something called the Trinity and made mm-hmm. all of those beliefs that you believe today that are not in the Bible and okay. not taught by Jesus himself. That's why the earliest followers of Christianity were not were monotheists believing in one God, did not believe in the Trinity. They believe Jesus was a messenger of God, like the Ibunites or the Nazarenes. What happened later on... they believe on, that he died, though. But the Quran says that it was it appeared to the people as if he died. So it would uh, make sense what? that people in the community believe that he died. So, so the Quran in the Quran, says, Quran he didn't die. Him. Yeah, Allah saved him, uh, but people believe, people perceived it as if he was he died. Okay. So it would make sense that certain people believe he died. There's no issue yes. at that time. If someone believed he died and followed his message, that doesn't mean he's going to hellfire or anything, because he's just following the message of... Uh, that was given to him. So okay. what happened later on then people started writing and fabricating information about God and about Jesus and making up things. <laughs> okay. Allah says in the Quran that they write the scripture with their own hand and they say it's from God. Okay. They can get money, the churches, etc. They made up certain... You're talking about the Catholic Church? Catholic Church is where all the, uh, the, the creeds come from. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was asking if that's where yeah. he was speaking. It's all where the creeds come from. So yeah. the reality is that Jesus was a prophet and messenger of God. He had a pure message. Every prophet and messenger has a pure message. But when he dies, some people corrupt the tradition. And when you okay. come today, you came to the corrupt beliefs and you thought it is the truth. Mm-hmm. So what the church taught you today is what they already changed and corrupted. That's why they have nothing original from Jesus. They have nothing original to show what Jesus actually was teaching. Okay, understood. So let me ask you this, actually. How do you view Prophet Muhammad? Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God? Well, I would believe so only because of something that you said earlier is that God brought forth the word to to the people because of their unrighteousness. And from what I understand from history, the Arabic part of the culture was very corrupt. And so God mm-hmm. wanted to, another part of the world to know what God was. So Absolutely. brought a prophet, a prophet to, to help clean that part of the world up. And so you brought forth the laws and the things that you were supposed to do. But Prophet Muhammad also preached the one, this is one God. The main creed is there is one God and you should only serve one God. But there were mm-hmm. still things within the Arabic culture culture that needed to be like the women like the killing of mm-hmm. young girls those things specifically needed to be fixed within that culture to bring them back to god is what yeah. i believe so i excellent. don't feel like the quran is bad i feel like it, it did what it was supposed to do yes so excellent but you know the interesting thing is this you, you said if you accept him as a messenger prophet muhammad salam, he didn't say he's just for the arabs he said he's for everyone has a universal message but yes what you said is very important he did come first to the arabs to change all of the, the 
problems that the Arabs had. You were worshipping idols, killing young daughters and all of these things. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what Allah says in the Quran, that he sent him to take people out of darkness into light. And the mm-hmm. interesting thing is this, is the Bible says the same thing. It says that there will be a messenger from the children of Ishmael who will go to the Arabs and he will tell them Old not to worship idols. Yes, and he will tell them not to worship idols. So exactly what Prophet Muhammad Wasallam did. Before, after Jesus. <clears throat> it's an Isaiah, it does not give a timeline. But it says there is a prophet uh, who's going to come to the Arabs specifically. And then he's going to tell them to support worship idols. It's only one prophet in history. Who did do, you, do you mind giving me, do you know it? Or do, should I Yeah, Isaiah up? 42. It's Isaiah chapter 42. You can read it if you okay. like. I can send you a video if you like with explaining the whole prophecy if you like. But generally, okay. it says that he's going to come to the Gentiles, the non-Jews, prophet. So it cannot be Jesus. So it's talking about someone who's going to come to the non-Jews. The mm-hmm. He's going to bring a new law, a new Torah, literally. He's going to bring a new mm-hmm. law. Jesus didn't bring a new law. No. Why Prophet Muhammad brought a new law? Mm-hmm. And it says that he's going to go to the children of Kedar, which is the Arabs. And then it says that he's going to go to people who worship idols and he's going to defeat them. Look, it is given the life of Prophet Muhammad by description. So this is the part of the Bible that you guys believe to be true. No, no. We, this is the thing, as I said. I don't need to use the Bible to show that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God because Islam by itself stands alone. But I'm saying even if you read the Bible, there are uh, some, remnants, okay. some remnants of truth there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. This remnants of tr- truth is, for example, this part that you quoted. Yes, you say that if, if, if there is a part that talks about Prophet Muhammad coming, we would not have an issue with that. You okay. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, so if you believe he's a messenger of God, then, mm-hmm. then he said to you that there is uh, that Jesus was not God. Then why wouldn't you accept the message? <laughs> why wouldn't you accept the teaching of the Prophet of God if you believe he's is a Prophet of God? I believe it was needed for the, the people of that time to be cleaned up. But and... he received revelation from God. Yeah. And a part of that revelation said that Jesus didn't die. That people have changed the previous scriptures. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you see what I'm saying? Just look, yeah. you will have this problem because look, if you look at the life of Prophet Muhammad, you cannot have anything except to accept that he's a prophet of God. Yeah, I don't believe any- that. I don't believe that anybody would claim, well, some crazy people do try to play with God and I don't, but you know, I don't believe anyone would claim that and then their death and then have all these things happen to them just for, in our terms, clout or something. Yeah, but, but not only that, but also the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam prophesied the future. Future. He, he, made, he spoke about the things that will happen in the future. He spoke about the things in the distant past. He brought the Quran, which is free from contradictions and errors. It's a scripture that no one is able to imitate. He performed certain acts of what you quote and call people call miracles that, uh, to the people at his time that they observed and saw. That's why they believed in him and followed him. It was not just that he just made a claim and suffered, which he did mm-hmm. suffer so much more than anyone I know, no more than anyone in human history. But still, he had evidence that he's a prophet of God. He called people to worship God alone. His yes. message was the message of truth. What else are you going to say other than he was a messenger of God? So if he <laughs> He was a, mess- a messenger of God, sister. Then it would make perfect sense for you to follow him, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't have objections. That's that's not a problem for me. It's just I'm really serious about where I'm going to go when I die, and I tell my husband all the time. You know, I can't do this for you or anyone else. It has to be for me because God's going to look at my heart. And if I say I'm going to become a Muslim woman, and God forbid something happens within our relationship, I'm still accountable to God for that statement. Mm-hmm. And you know, I have taken the shahada before unknowingly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went to a, a place, and a sister she told me to take my shahada but I wasn't serious about it at the time I was still learning and so I went to church <laughs> the next day because it was just a learning experience and then I, they told me that you're not supposed to say the shahada and, and do all these things and then go back to what this you were doing before yeah it's not it's nothing on you it's just on the person who did not do it correctly they did not explain to you what the shahada is what, what it signifies she it's, told me what it meant in English she did not explain to you what what it means to take the shahada that you actually oh. become Muslim and you leave associated importance of God you actually try to, to now worship God and follow the commands of God in the Quran. She did. She did. She did. She tell you no, about? she just told me don't go back to church. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. No, that's what I mean. it doesn't make any sense. But some people do it, unfortunately, for themselves because they know they would be rewarded for leading people to good. But it's but not rewarding of, if I don't believe it. Absolutely, that's what they don't know. He's good. You're telling them, reminding him now, right? <laughs> it's about the people actually sincerely accepting that thing and sincerely wanting to follow it. That's why I'm saying, sister. Look, taking the shahada is you already believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God because of what happened and changed into the you know yeah. who can't like if God God can't change only people who can change people's hearts from what they were doing in the Arabic country is God like you're not going to tell people who've done things for culture and centuries and centuries to stop unless something of God moves them to stop absolutely you know and you cannot and you cannot speak about the future that is li- we're living in today without being a messenger of God the prophecy is from prophets only 
Well, well, because I know I don't have much time left. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people waiting. There's one thing that I did have a question for in the Quran. May I ask it or no? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Of course, yeah. You said one time about magic and that Muslims believe in magic. What does that mean? Like magic back in Moses when Moses was was fighting them and back and forth and yes. turning a yes. serpent. Yes, yes, yes. Like those people who were the magicians of the time of Moses were doing all of these practices of magic. So we <laughs> believe there are there there is something supernatural called magic, and, mm. and there are certain practices that a person can do in order for him to do certain effect influence other people but they can only influence other people with the will of Allah right so the magic is Allah no no not the magic is Allah magic is something created by Allah but it okay. cannot have a power except if Allah allows it to have power <laughs> for example I have power physical power but I cannot harm anyone except if, uh, if Allah is allowing me to do the action I cannot do okay. anything in the world without allow Allah Allah allowing you to do that thing okay so Allah created so. magic Allah created mm -hmm. magic and some people can use it as a tool to harm other people but if so Allah, you don't think magic is of the devil you think it's of God even the devil is created by God. Everything is created. Okay, that's what you mean. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is created by God. But people can use magic in a way in uh, to harm other individuals, to harm other people. And then Allah can protect those people or Allah can allow it to happen as a test for the individual. Mm. You understand? So, but in order for someone to use magic, he, they have to commit this belief. So, for they example, have to they sacrifice, yeah, they have to, to, for example, sacrifice to other than God. They will have to... Uh, oh, they have this, to do... Okay. This, this is the only way someone can do magic. Magic because mm -hmm. it's a, you commit this belief and then you can use magic you can use certain things there are certain things that you can do and there are certain ways to protect yourself from magic in islam as well certain things that you can say that allah can protect you and shield you from magic happening mm -hmm. but we believe that magic is a supernatural force that exists within the world that makes Create. sense okay so like say if i and i had this conversation with my husband say if i wanted to take my shahada but there are things that i may not know like like maybe culturally i'm not comfortable with wearing a hijab it's not something that i've been taught it's not something i was raised to do so to me culturally that would feel really weird and i don't think i would be in a place where i could feel comfortable and he was telling me that that means that i'm not really followed like he'll be held accountable as his wife if i don't wear my hijab leave him now don't worry about him, leave him okay. Right now. <laughs> like, okay look this is the the truth uh, sister look no one is perfect. Mm. There is not a Muslim on earth who is perfect. The Prophet ﷺ told us, Kullu ibn Adam Every child of Adam commits sin. And then he said, the best of the people who make sins are those who repent. So yeah. the, the reality is that you got to repent from the sins that you do. You have to know that what you're doing is a sin, but you will fall, you will do sins. Mm. Now, when you talk about the knowledge, no one is born knowing everything. I'm learning every day about Islam. Everyone is learning every day about Islam. It is a gradual step-by-step -step process that people take. A person becomes Muslim and he's not accountable for anything except that which he knows. So if you do something that is wrong by not unknowingly you're not accountable for it it's a step-by-step -step process that's why uh, Allah in the beginning the mission of Prophet Muhammad did not make alcohol prohibited at once it was a gradual process because it was mm. difficult for people they were just drinking it more than water you know it was the, <laughs> it was the culture at the time so things are gradually taken on step by step the important thing is to believe in the foundations of Islam that there is one God worthy of worship Jesus is a messenger sent by God he did not die for anyone's sins because everyone is responsible for his own sin no one takes the sin of someone else he is coming there's a second not even Adam there. and Eve? Not even Adam and Eve. And that's the thing. Uh, did Adam ask you and me before eating from the tree? No. No. So why are we responsible for it? Because the Bible it says, the Bible, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 19 and 20, it says, The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, and the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. The soul mm. that sin shall die. So not another soul shall die. Mm. The one that committed the sin. And the father does not take the, the sin of, of his son and vice versa. Because mm. he's the one who did it. Why am I accountable for it? So in Islam, they committed the sin. Then Allah mm. forgave them. Mm. Has nothing to do with me. <laughs> what? You know? What do you mean that's it? You see that Christianity, the whole belief about the original sin and all of that. In Islam, Allah said they slipped. You know, you know when you slip, you make a mistake, you slip. Yeah. They slept, they made a mistake, and then they asked forgiveness. Allah told them how to, this was one of the, uh, the wisdoms, is mm. when they commit the sin, Allah teaches them how to repent now. This was the lesson of them disobeying at that time. So Allah told Adam words, words of repentance, how to repent. Mm -hmm. And then Allah repented upon him. This is a sign for us to understand of what we need to do. When we commit a sin, we do the same thing. We come back to Allah and we repent and Allah forgives us. So, mm. look, Allah created us. You're responsible for what you do. I'm responsible for what I do. And God sent prophets and messengers, including Jesus and Moses and Noah and Abraham, we worship him alone, we pray to him alone, we don't associate any partners with him. We don't pray to anything other than Allah. And when Prophet Muhammad is a messenger of God, the Quran is from God, it's a message of, from Allah, is the word of Allah. If someone believes these things, then he accepts Islam. That is what takes you to paradise. Even though wearing hijab is a command of God, you have Muslims, you didn't, don't you see Muslims today, women who are not wearing the hijab? Yeah, but they'll be held accountable for their choice, right? It's true, but but that does not disqualify them from being a Muslim. It's an important thing. Now, which one is worse? Let me ask you this. They're mm. not believing at all, which is eternal hellfire, or them being accountable for a sin that they could repent from and God can forgive <laughs> them from it. Which 
one. <laughs> Internal hellfire, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're all trying sense. to get away from. Yes, it wouldn't make any sense for someone to say that I'm not going to accept Islam and go to eternal hellfire just because I could be doing a sin. I could be account that I would be accountable for that. I could repent from and could be forgiven. But so he wouldn't be. So my husband wouldn't be held accountable for me not wearing my hijab then. It's a gradual process, sister. So if you, when you start accepting Islam, right, mm. we have something called faith, iman, in, the faith in the heart. We believe that iman, the faith increases with good deeds. So faith practice. increases with good deeds. Yes. So when you become Muslim and you start to pray, yes, prayer every day for us, every day five times, you connect to Allah. Your faith increases in God when you start doing righteous acts or always having God in your mind. So right? you're not saved by your deeds. No, you're you're saved by the mercy of Allah, but deeds is a part of the things that you need to do. You cannot just live your I'm life. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm just trying I'm to sorry. understand. Yeah. So you're saying that the deeds, my prayer. Um, what is the other pillar about giving to the needy? No, no, um, there are, Mecca. There are really good commands. I'm just giving an example, right? I'm saying no, I know, but all those yeah. things increase my, my God calls me to do deeds in the Quran because it increased my faith in believing in Him. But my yes. sin is forgiven through His mercy. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Okay. You said it perfectly because this is the thing. These deeds bring you closer to God, increases your faith, and ultimately you enter paradise by the mercy of God. Because God sees mm -hmm. you, you're trying your best, you're doing your good, and you're increasing your faith. In the end, because of the mercy of God, Allah forgives you and He puts He admits you into paradise. Right? So, oh. so, so when you accept Islam and you start practicing, and your faith increases, following the commands become easier because you have a stronger faith. Yeah, so now it, it would be easy, much much easier for you to wear the hijab because many sisters accept Islam and it takes them gradually. A, a, uh, some time to wear the hijab not necessarily in the beginning when you start incorporating Islam in your life and practicing it a step by step then wearing the, the hijab does not become as difficult as, as you're perceiving it right now so yeah. what I would say is not to worry about the hijab right now mm. so worry about the most important thing which is dying mm. not rejecting the messenger of God before dying which is Prophet mm. Muhammad which I don't want to do accepting the Prophet Muhammad salam, following the, the commands of God as much as possible which is all good commands for you give charity be good to your parents be good to your neighbors all of the commands many of which you would be already practicing Practicing, yeah, right? I would do those things. Yes, and um, when you would be praying to Allah Azza wa Jal five times a day, getting closer to Ooh, Him, then okay. you yourself would want to wear the hijab, you know? And my advice to your husband is to leave you as a step by step take. Oh, he's not here now, and I wish he... <laughs> I'm gonna make no, him no, watch no. this back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll upload it. You can watch it back. But yeah. the point is this yeah, he's not accountable if he gives you advice. If he gives you advice, but he has to, as I said, he has to leave you step by step until you start practicing Islam, and then you're a little bit more into Islam, and then maybe he reminds you with the hijab. If he reminds you then there is no sin on him because as i said to you before everyone is responsible for his own sin that's what i told him yeah he can listen to this as well this is clear in, in the quran it's what's upon mm. you is the responsibility of reminding your family Remind can i tell him not to have four wives i don't i don't I'm think sorry. he wants to marry i don't think he wants to marry four wives does he i don't <laughs> I don't think he does. Don't worry, okay. just bring, bring him to me. I'll I mean, I way. think, I think, I think you answered a lot of my questions. Um, I do have questions about the Quran, but I'm, I'm already, you know, I have a. Uh, uh, people who I can talk to about that and I don't want to take up too many times because no you are one of the, the, the people here who I think a lot of people like to talk to. You seem really sincere. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll take my shahada sometime. I'm, I'm looking into it. Um, my our heart is open. You definitely have uh, opened up some more of that because it was a little bit closed off, but you answered some questions that make sense to me. Especially that part about the deeds. I really thought that Muslims were only saved by your deeds and you had a scale and that was the only way you could go to heaven is if your scale of deeds were like more than the scale of the your prophet, bad deeds. The prophet told the people, like his companions, he said, no one will enter paradise with his deeds. They said, oh, even you, oh prophet of Allah, because the prophet is doing more deeds than anyone. So mm. he said to them, even me, except if Allah encompasses me with his mercy. That's how you enter paradise. Wow, that's you beautiful. The mercy of God. So that is the teachings of Islam. It's not like mm. A, B, C, you do this, you get this. It's not, it's not like this, you know? Okay. So, Look, I, I can see you're there, sister, because as I said, you already believe, <laughs> you already believe the Prophet Muhammad as a Careful, God. careful, careful. Yeah, no, don't worry. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm very careful, right? <laughs> so I can see you're there from, from a belief perspective. Mm -hmm. so when you you feel you're ready, let me know. You know, the process is very simple of accepting Islam, the testimony of faith. Yes, uh, I believe uh, no prophet. I've you told you, I said the Shahada before. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just, you I just, say again, no, yeah? I don't want to say the Shahada. Oh, look, <laughs> look, my husband's here right now. He can't. <laughs> he can't at the right time no problem. Uh, yeah. Look, the last thing I do is to push people I, uh, to take anything. I want you to take that step. You said it yourself. You maybe maybe you take it. You want to just investigate something. You want to read something. You want to check something. You can do whatever you want to do. And when you feel mm -hmm. you're ready, I can see you're there. As I, I'm saying, you from my estimation, I can feel you're there. And when you when you want to take that step, then take that. Step. And I want to take the shahada. I can take the shahada even if I don't want to wear hijab yet. Yes, 
Are you gonna? You want me to talk to him? Babe, more? babe, come. Bring him. I can talk to come. him. Come, babe. I'm gonna say it one more time. Excuse me, Mr. Muslim Lantern. Can I take the shahada and not feel comfortable with wearing the hijab yet? Is that okay? Absolutely, hundred percent. Did you hear that, you, babe? You accepting Islam, <laughs> and what what the brother needs to understand is you accepting Islam is the most important thing. Is that which saves you from hellfire? Everyone commits sin on a daily basis. In mm. order for the sister to feel like she's comfortably comfortably wearing the hijab, she has to first enter into the fold of Islam, start practicing, and then when her when her iman increases, she will want to do it on her own. Now, as a husband, you have to understand that reverts have to take things step by step. You don't tell them to do this from the beginning, change your life 180 degrees. That's not the way things are done. They take their time. And and you do reminders after a while when you feel like she's more comfortable with it. You can remind her. That's it. You're not going to be a sinner for a, a wife not wearing the hijab even if you reminded her. Because we do not force anyone. No one can force anyone to do anything in Islam. But yeah? you, but so, but right. it, isn't it haram to leave Islam though? So like, I guess I'm really scared because if Islam? I take the shahada and then like say I, for some reason I want to go back to Christianity. I'm not saying that that will happen. Mm -hmm. And then I want to go forth and tell people like, you know, I was, I don't want to be an Islam no more. I felt like I was being pushed into it. You know, come, come to, come back to Christianity with me. I can be killed for that. Yes. In the book. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, I don't know where that question came from now, but no, <laughs> look, look, look. A lot of the laws or most of the laws, they are applicable in an Islamic state in a specific context. Mm. We don't have an Islamic state today where you have Sharia laws applied. Yes. What you're talking about is not applicable to you if you did today say La ilaha Allah. Like you already said, I said the Shahada before and left. Did anyone do anything to you? <laughs> Look, no one would do anything to you, sister. You understand? Even if someone were to, to do that out of ignorance of now and out of not understanding, they have a different case and a specification. A lot of the laws that people look at to these are laws in an Islamic state in a Sharia state under a specific context. And it is not just like if someone leaves, they're, they're punished. No, there are a complete whole process that is a video on my channel you can watch if you want on this idea. But that's not the case for you. You got nothing to to worry about but you shouldn't be doing that because you should be only accepting if you want to accept yeah we don't play games with god right one day you accept something you know yeah okay yeah. God, I don't in you. Right, i don't believe in you it's like oh, it doesn't <laughs> work they play games yeah. with god and any question you will have i can guarantee you will be answered for you you will not have any issues with it. i don't fear any intellectual reasons that would make you okay now oh, i want to leave islam i don't think well, that four wives one is a good one i'm that four <laughs> wives Valid intellectual thing. Look, do you know how many wives did Solomon have in the Bible? Many in concubines. In how many did David have? A lot in how concubines. Many did, how many did Moses have? How many did Abraham have? <laughs> all of the prophets I'm wives. not. I'm not the wife of Moses Abraham. I'm the wife of this guy. <laughs> yeah, but, but this one, I, I, even in the Bible, there is nothing explicit in the Bible that says you cannot marry more than one wife. It's not explicit, no. Yeah, the teachings of the church is something, but the Bible does not say not marry more than one wife. There are laws in the Old Testament for what you do when you when you have more than one wife. Laws just specifically for that. Oh, okay, well. So, I mean, so it was always as a part of the teachings of God. That's why prophets and messengers did it. And mm -hmm. God did not say to them, that's wrong, don't do this. So yeah. the prophets are the examples for us. But mm -hmm. we're saying, no worry, I don't think he's planning to marry another wife anyways. <laughs> like, <laughs> is, sister, whether you are a Muslim or not, he can do it. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say? No, it's not he like, I don't want to get into that now, right? This is a personal stuff. But I'm saying it's not like something that is to do with you accepting or not. It's something that he chooses to do, whether you are a Muslim or you're not. You get what I'm trying to say? Oh, so okay. And it would stop you because something he can do either way by himself, whether you are well, a Muslim. I, I do believe that the Islam, the faith is, is beautiful and, and how I like, I like the laws for women. I like how, you know, I'm, I'm covered regardless, you know, how God looks after the women, you know, you know, knowing the covering that, is, you know, the covering is in the New Testament, the hijab what? that you're talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I, I know that, you know, back in the day we were supposed to, and it was a cultural no, shift. It day, wasn't a no, biblical. No, in the Bible, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying in the back in the day in the Bible and even during the time after the Bible, it was a cultural thing that it was just known that you were supposed to cover. And then culturally in America it has changed from coverings to no, being Paul, open. Paul claims it's the command of God. He, when he was talking to the people of the command, they should do. Oh, I don't know. I would have to look that. I didn't see him come out. Corinthians chapter 11, read it. When you can, you can read yeah. Corinthians chapter 11. You can read what he was teaching in the verses there. So he was commands for women. One of them mm. is the woman, if she, if she doesn't cover her head, it should be shaved. That's why are nuns covering their heads? Shaved? Yes, that's what the Bible says. <laughs> I'm going to have to read that. <laughs> I don't think you're lying, but I'm going to have to read it. Open it now. Corinthians chapter 11. Corinthians chapter 11. For if a woman is 
not covered, let her also be shorn. Is that shaved? Yes. Okay, but if it is shameful for a woman to be shaved or shorn, uh, -huh. uh let her be covered. Point is, is it says that that her, her head should be shaved. Yeah, you're you're right. You didn't lie. Yeah. To all those course. watching, he didn't lie. He didn't <laughs> okay. I can yeah. Look, these are teachings of the Bible, so I, it's not like you you saying oh Islam says a reality. Whatever you're seeing in Islam, I can I will show it to you in the Bible already. You know, mm. but it is just the people are not practicing the teachings of God. Well, maybe I'll take my shahada, maybe. Yes. Child. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I'm ready now, if you're ready. Or if you're not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happens when you meet me in, in the eternal? You say, she was not ready, and you made her take the shahada. She was not no, ready. But that's why I'm saying I'm ready, if you're ready. Oh, um, no. <laughs> like, nobody forced you? Like, I know, nobody forced me. Okay, I'm really, I'm close, I'm close to it. But yeah, thank you so much for taking your time no out. Problem. I appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, I appreciate your sincerity as well. And honestly, that's, that's the type of conversation that I try to have. Where actually someone is sincere is not coming to argue, just argumentative nature, but rather it's coming to actually learn something ask questions as well i like can answer it there's no issues with that so i'll let you go